My work is about more than what you see. Um, it addresses not just the visible, the aesthetic part, but the invisible, so the spiritual. I want, I want the artwork to speak. So it's not just about it being inspired, but also about inspiring. There's a reaction. There's, there's a connection. And so I want people to look at my art and have a connection, have a reaction. My life, just like anybody else's, it isn't, it isn't perfect, it isn't easy. There are moments of pain. You know, we, we all cry tears. We, we suffer in our own ways. We go through things. But there came a point in my life, and this had a huge impact on my work. I, I came to see all those things as a refining process. And that process, that refining process in my life, I took it as a refining process in my art. Because what we create with our hands is it's a manifestation of that which is inside our hearts. And that's true for everyone and whatever they do. And everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a reason that they're here. And I believe that art is my purpose. It's my call. It's the reason that I was even given life. It's no coincidence that I was born with the abilities that I have and with a passion that I have. I don't think there's anything more wondrous than that moment when you think the world is one way and your equations, your math, your ideas, your theories begin to convince you that it is another way. But to me, it's wonderful to get your sense of reality kicked, to get a kick in the head and to at least be able to contemplate the real possibility that the laws of physics are suggesting that reality is not what you think it is. Although, if you're seeking to be pleased by what you see, if you want to feel joy, you get on a boat, you ride to the horizon, you go over the horizon, you keep going and you see something that no one has seen before that you know. Yes, yes hugely so. In fact, we use the same word, horizon. So just as you mentioned Christopher Columbus can look to the horizon and knows that there's something beyond the horizon but can't actually see it, we look out into the cosmos as far as we can and we believe that there's stuff beyond what we can see, beyond our cosmic horizon. I think that's, <laughs> in some ways, that's the greatest challenge of every artist, actually, to be faithful, to be, to be devoted and persistent. The whole idea of the process over the product. I mean, I still believe the product is important, but just my approach to art, my view of art changed. And with that, my approach to art making. And so now, I, I don't just render beautiful things. I do go beyond that, and there's, there's a very big purpose to what I do. I don't believe in over-philosophizing uh, art. I think that if you do that, especially even before you start, you're just you're either just not going to start or you're just going to lose yourself in the process and it's going to be it's going to give more paralysis than creativity but when i create art i create it with intention when i start a work i do have an idea of how i want it and actually i used to be very very strict i would always want to stick to that original vision but then i learned that you can't always do that. Work will evolve. The more, the more you work on something, the more the ideas will come. And I used to teach myself to be flexible. So I'm flexible, but I'm not chaotic. Um, things do have to be done in a certain way, in a certain order.
about the idea of making a drawing move that's so powerful. That's what makes stop motion such an amazing medium. When I started with a stop motion, it was more experimental than anything because I had never done anything like it. It was just this process of, of adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting and it added something so dynamic to the idea of drawing because no longer is the drawing something permanent. It's not something that remains. It's something, it's something fleeting. So this whole process of, of the stop motion, um, I mean, it relies on, like, you draw, I make a mark, and then I have to erase it, I have to change it, and draw another one, and change it again. And it's over and over and over, and I had never done that before, so I'm not used to the idea of, of a piece not being permanent, not being there for me to even hold. The end product is, well, the end product was basically just nothing. Everything was smudged away and that was the end. That actually taught me a lot because art making is about the process, it's about the risks that you take, the steps you take to get there. It's not just about this final product and this, this pristine thing that you hold at the end. I started using images of, of deep space objects, so whether it was a nebula or a galaxy. When I thought about it, those images are such perfect depictions of the subject matter that I work with. When you look at the images of deep space objects, obviously they're things that you don't see with your naked eye. You can't just go outside and see it. We know they're there. I mean, obviously we have the technology to be able to see it, but it's not directly visible. So it's, it's there, but we don't see it. And it's beyond us. It's, I mean, it's so vast and it's so far away from us, but it's still a part of our reality. And that's the same way that I see that realm of the spiritual. And so I started using these images in my work. I remember I had this, I had this thought. Um, when you look at a mirror, you see your own reflection. You see yourself in the context of what's directly around you. But what if we looked in a mirror and we saw more than that? We saw ourselves in the context of something greater. And so what I started doing was I started rendering these images, actual Hubble images, I would go off of them and do them on mirror. So when you actually look at the piece, when you look at the final product, obviously you see your own reflection because it's a mirror, but you see your face right in, in the image of this galaxy or nebula or whatever I choose to render. And it's, it's such a beautiful picture of how we can find our identity in that idea, in something so vast and something so beyond us, we don't have to lose ourselves when we think of it. I mean, we're so small on the scale of that, yet we have a place in it, and it's a part of us. My inspiration comes, comes from God. I, I don't want to, I don't say that in such a cocky way. I say it in a very humble way, because my ideas are limited. I know, I know myself. I often I just get, I just get stuck, and even the the sight of a blank canvas it, it can be extremely daunting. I'm not saying it's the voice of God through my artwork, but I say that I I have to let self sufficiency crumble. rely on something greater than myself.